Hi, my name is Fitzy Williams. I'm a sleepologist. I will be on the online prosperity show talking about insomnia, its effects on us and our productivity next day and how to fix it. Thanks for watching. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the sleepologist, Sveti. Sveti, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. I never knew that you people needed um, a consultant or somebody to help them sleep. So when I came across Sveti, I thought she would be a perfect candidate for our show. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this, you're an entrepreneur that's trying to set up your business and actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, as you would know, there's a lot of hustle that's involved and a lot of us work all the way through to the early hours of the morning and we never get enough sleep. Or when we are sleeping, we are gazing at the ceiling and we're wondering what's going on in my business while I'm in bed. But you should be sleeping because you can't do well if you are not feeling well, all right? So Sveti here is the author of a book called Fix My Sleep and also The Sleepy Hip and also another book called The Droopy-Eyed Donkey um, Who Couldn't Sleep. And she's also the official delegate of the World Sleep Day. She's also the member of the Australasian Sleep Association and Sleep Health Foundation and is also a renowned sleepologist, like I've mentioned earlier on, and a leading sleep advocate who actually helps clients to target sleep disruptors and replace them with sleep enhancing behaviors. Now, I know you might be wondering why is this important and why you should actually, um, you know, get in touch with somebody who helps you to sleep. And that's the reason why Sveti is on the show today. Now, Sveti, tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually started working with people uh, to alleviate their insomnia. Well, first of all, my, my story began when I lost my sleep. So when I lost my sleep, I was at the, in a position where nobody could help me. I couldn't find anybody to help me with my insomnia. I used to go to doctors and I get prescription medication, which was either was antidepressant medication or sleeping pills. And that didn't help. I wasn't happy with that. So I began digging, you know, because I couldn't find anybody. So instead of looking, any further, I began to kind of research and I became my own sleep therapist. And once I, once I kind of fixed my own sleep, my life changed totally because I now became, you know, somebody who I always wanted to become, you know, I became happy. I was, I was, I was then happy. I could open my business. You know, things just began to happen, happen for me. I became healthy you know i became very strong emotionally psychologically physically and things like that so then people began coming to me saying hey um can you help me can you fix my sleep can you you know start asking me questions about sleep and and i began helping people in that way and then over time people say hey you should write a book and i did and over over time it kind of turned into a business that i have today Absolutely. So what sort of people are you working with and what, what is causing their insomnia? Yes, people who I work with, I don't think I have one kind of particular avatar of person that I work with. I have people from different backgrounds, different ages and different countries coming to me saying, um, can you help me? How can you help me? And so the way I help them is, firstly, I help them understand that insomnia, uh, out of all the sleep disorders, I only work with insomnia in particular. And I basically help them understand that insomnia is not a sleep disorder. It's a disorder of uh, inappropriate hyperarousal in the brain. Basically, it's the brain can, cannot shut off. And this is why we lose our sleep, whether it's at the beginning of the night, whether it's in the middle of the night or, you know, towards the morning. So it's basically that inability to shut off the brain to in to go to sleep and this is what i do i help them to switch off the brain switch off the body so they don't have that overactive body or overactive mind so basically it teach them to switch off both of this you know to so they can sleep absolutely what, what what is the actual importance of sleep in a human being well think about this right um humans 
it's been established that humans can survive three times longer without food than without sleep. Wow. That would just answer all of this, basically all of these questions because studies have been done, numerous, numerous studies have been done, obviously not on humans directly, but on mice that um, if you don't sleep in the, for a prolonged period of time, let's say, you know, three weeks, you begin to die. The organs begin to shut down. And this experiment has, done, has been done on, on mice in particular, that uh, the usual expectancy of mice life is two years, right? So when they deprived mice of all stages of sleep, mice only survived about three weeks. Wow. So naturally from 365 days, which is a year, they have been shut down to only 14 days, um, which actually cuts like 91% of their lifespan because they haven't gone to sleep. Exactly. So the approximately was about 30 days, some, just a, approximately 30 days they survived. Uh, and let's say about three weeks or so. So it just, um, you know, scientists still don't understand why we develop the need for sleep. But what we do know, we know what sleep does, what happens during sleep, we do know that. But we don't know, and we don't understand why we actually need to sleep for such a long period of time. For like a third of our lifetime, we need to sleep. This is just such a new, um, the research is not that advanced to understand that aspect of human being. Absolutely. Right. So the people that are probably watching this uh, show here, Sveta, um, usually entrepreneurs that are, um, you know, working to build a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you would notice that the world has become a global village. Most of the clients that people are working with are from other countries, which means they prolong the time that they are looking at computer screens or their phones. Does that have an adverse effect um, you know, on the production or on the, um, you know, work that can be outputted by such an individual. Again, we don't understand why we need sleep, but what we do understand that some processes in the brain are not activated unless we are asleep, including memory consolidation, right? So anything that you learn during the day, Basically, you got that information, right? But the information for the next day recall of that information, it will not uh, happen. That first will not happen unless the memory is consolidated in our brain. And that will not happen if you miss the sleep. And if you, even if you get short on sleep, that process is not complete. For some unknown reason, we need that number of sleep. Let's say, not everyone needs the same amount of sleep, but we need basically a few cycles of sleep. Again, it's difficult to establish uh, because there's not much, not enough research has been done on particularly so many hours of sleep everyone needs. So perhaps you might need six hours, I might need, you know, nine hours. So, but that's not important at this stage to know, uh, to answer your question. The, you know, there's so many processes need to happen in what during our sleep that can affect how we function the next day. Let's, let me give another example. Let's say somebody is on high blood pressure medication and that happens to entrepreneurs too. Um, that can happen to anybody in, in, um, for that reason. So let's say somebody is on high blood pressure medication and they missed one night of sleep or they had poor sleep one night before. The next day, their high blood pr pressure is elevated but that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is that the medication that they are on will not work. You see how the medication will not be effective the next day. The body will not respond to medication because you had poor sleep the night before. Wow. So that basically, if you do have any con medical conditions in the first place, uh, perhaps the medication will not your body will not respond. Same goes for depression, anxiety. Those medications will also not be effective the next day. You know, the, your productivity levels will go down because your brain will not function at the capacity that it can be if it actually was well rested the night before, like that same night. 
it's not just goes for the productivity levels, you know, it's for immune system function too. Your immunity drops down and you're at risk of develop, like not just developing, but being exposed to pathogens and actually contracting the infections and not being able to kill them in, in, your, in your immune system in, inside the body. So you basically, every part of your life, whether it's physical, emotional, psychological, and biological is compromised because you didn't get one night of good sleep but you see if you continue this this way this lifestyle your health declines very fast it actually sh cuts your life shorter and also deprives you of that quality of life as well absolutely you did mention that um you know the lab mice's life was cut short because um they had not been having adequate sleep now, in this world that we live in, there's so much disruption. Um, there are so many gadgets that require our attention, so many screens to look at. Do any of those uh, constitute as sleep disruptors? Yes, absolutely. You see, when if you look back at you know those days, is let's say 13th century, for example what we live today let's say in the month time what we experience what we're exposed to for example in one single month those people those days were exposed to in a year time you see or in the or entire lifetime or what we experienced in in the in a whole year they probably never experienced an entire 50 years of their life you see so that is we are exposed to so much um even just think about it by the time somebody drives from home to the let's say to the city to let's say they're driving for an hour every morning so they are exposed to so much that their brain literally cannot process that information and when people lie in bed that that information is still there because it needs to be processed and it's still sitting there in the queue so when people lie down in bed the information is knocking on your door saying hey i need to be processed i have not had the chance to be processed yet you see so the and this is when it comes it, it kind of comes without you know asking for the in without invitation because it needs to be processed so when we do lie in bed the brain is gets very active and studies actually do show that our brain is actually more active during our sleep than our uh, wakefulness hours wow okay so so then what should people then do you know because you do teach sleep enhancing uh behaviors what sort of um activities to, should people do when they're winding down and how can they actually make sure that they are not going to be suffering from insomnia when they hit um you know the, the pillar yes exactly so the activities as you know, usually what I suggest, what I teach people to do in my programs, what I do, I basically teach them a routine change. Because you see, there's so much out there about the diet, about exercise. You see, you go, there is gym at every corner, right? There is so many exercises, so much about exercise, and that's great. It's about it's so much about the diet, this and that, and this, that, nutrition, this and this, and that's great. But you see, People do not, for them to achieve some goals, whether it's nutritional goals or exercise goals, you know, so, um, they need to change the lifestyle. But this day still, um, like sleep disorders, like insomnia, are classed as a disease, you see? They are something people are ashamed to talk about. People are ashamed to even, you know, mention that they have. But to, to sleep well, it needs to be a lifestyle, appropriate lifestyle for it. So at the moment sleep is not so much appreciated because there's not much known about it so what i do i teach people to adjust their lifestyle so they can have that good night's sleep because third of our life we spent sleeping when we don't spend third of our life eating we don't spend third of our life exercising right some people are lucky to have get one hour of exercise a day or three hours a week right we don't spend hours on nutrition every day but we do spend third of our life sleeping and this is what people need to understand when i get that you know understanding to people who i work with they actually begin to change their lifestyle to have the good night's sleep so what i do teach in in the way of uh changing lifestyle i get them to understand whether 
is your insomnia actually uh, the root cause of your insomnia is it biological is it habitual is it psychological emotional right and as people understand this they begin to cha make changes in the right direction and but generally speaking what i do teach is as when the light when the sun is down this is when your sleep routine begins and in fact your sleep routine doesn't do, your sleep doesn't begin then it begins in the morning when you wake up you gotta establish some morning routine alkalize your body get it ready for the day so your body doesn't struggle when it gets to night time it's struggling to switch off right most people that i work with they struggle a the whole day to stay awake and then when it comes night time they're wide awake they struggle to go to sleep so it's just, the struggle is always there so simple strategies implemented you know, such as you know as soon as when the sun is down the lights need to be switched off you know when the since the invention of electricity the great things happen but also everyone got insomnia so we need to basically stay away from the fluorescent lights, dim the lights at home, turn down the noise, turn down the music, turn off TV, just simple things like that. Create that distance between you and TV, right? Uh, make sure you have great, good food ethics. When I, when I say food ethics, is basically knowing that, you know, when to eat and what to eat, especially in the morning, especially at dinner time. You know, don't basically everything you do is one general principle. Keep it down. Food not too spicy, not too much. Keep it down. Light, turn it off, turn it down. Noises, uh, even people. If you get people over, you know, find something that it's not so much. You know, so much, so active because your brain. If your brain gets into that state of being really active, hyperactivity, it may take you two, three hours to wind down. So this is why I get them to begin winding down since the time the sun is down. Wow. Okay. So obviously there's quite a lot that you, you put together there. Um, I find that whenever I fly to a different state, uh, maybe in a different time zone, I um, fail to sleep or maybe the environment or I'm not quite used to the bed or maybe the way the bed is set up is just not the way, you know, it is at home. Do you think long term um, that that's, that's, that's a big cause of insomnia or you can still work around a routine to make sure that you're ready for wherever you sleep, or wherever you go? Yes, I. What, what, yes, this is it. When you do a travel, you got a lifestyle that you got to travel. You got to constantly sleep in different beds. I do that. This is my lifestyle too. But it doesn't mean that is accompanied by lost sleep. The the you know the key here is to establish those associations that will trigger your brain to go to sleep. The same as you know people call them triggers. Like for example, people get triggers for anxiety. People get triggers for for whatever things right smelling something is a trigger for uh in for some particular memory from the past so establishing back to your question establishing those associations such as dimming the lights the same way uh, you know bringing a book that puts you to sleep you see something boring you know i tell people find something boring right don't watch tv show that is really exciting because that will literally excite your brain your brain will be so excited that it will not let you sleep. So bring your own associations, not necessarily bring it in the physical uh, form, but perhaps, you know, um, something that puts you to sleep. This, you know what works really well? I teach people to gratitude your way to sleep. This is what I call this exercise, right? And that works like magic. Um, so what it is, I tell people that when you land in bed, you are literally alone with your thoughts. You're alone with your emotions, with your past things that happened in the past, with your future worries and things like that. So when you're lying in bed, you need to be in control of your own brain. And to, to do that, you need to distract your brain from thinking too much of the past or of the future. So to do that, this is, this is a very simple technique, right? Well, this is why it's called grateful your way to sleep. It's it, as the name suggests, basically you lie there and you find things that happened that day that you're grateful for. You might not necessarily straight away think, oh, I'm grateful for this, but 
make your brain be grateful for it, right? So for example, I, you know, I was, you know, somebody got me a cup of coffee. I am so grateful unconditionally for that gesture that right now I'm going to spend, you know, my pre-sleep minutes or whatever, some time to be grateful for that single thing. And your brain will begin to calm down. Your brain will begin to enjoy that, you know, that feeling of gratitude and will begin to shut down. You begin to tell that, oh, it's okay. I love this feeling. Because feeling gratitude is basically puts us into a state of relaxation. Right. Great stuff. I mean, obviously, there's quite a lot that's involved um, in this whole sleep, uh, you know, uh, mechanism. And that's the reason why you see people spend um, a third of their lifetime actually sleeping than they spend time uh, eating. But if you ask me, I, I, it took me an hour to get lunch today. So maybe that statistic is, <laughs> is not correct. But um, I do appreciate what you're saying and how um, you are actually helping. I was actually, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing my own research prior to this show, and I actually discovered it takes uh, seven minutes for somebody to actually fall asleep completely. And um, is is that something that's worth knowing if you are going to be an insomniac? And then just knowing that okay, I just need to concentrate on trying to sleep seven minutes and then um that should work out or would that actually distract them that they get fixated on the seven minutes or counting sheep that they actually stay awake it actually takes up to 20 minutes that, that this period of time that since the lights turned off and you're lying in bed trying to go to sleep that that is called sleep latency that period of time could take up to 20 minutes and that's in the healthy individual so that I can see no problems with lying in bed for seven minutes trying to go to sleep and actually going to sleep in seven minutes. So that is perfectly fine. And if you do take 20 minutes, you that is still fine. This is why this is the brain. But basically, when we're lying in bed, we basically are transitioning from the brain wave, uh, from one brain wave to another. That's called light sleep. We're still kind of transitioning. We're not fully awake right now. We're like in that alpha brain wave, you see, but we're not fully in deeply asleep yet. So we can be woken from this period of, from this um, kind of sleep very easily. We can hear things around us. We are aware of everything, but we are not fully, fully awake. So yes, it's totally fine to answer your question. So yes, this is why, uh, actually on the flip side of this, if people, fall asleep before their head hits the pillow. This is an indication of sleep deprivation. They need more sleep. They're exhausted, right? And if it takes more than 20 minutes, that could be a sign of insomnia. So there is, you know, two sides of this particular. But if it takes seven minutes, that's perfect. Absolutely. I just remembered something. When I was a kid, I used to want to switch off the lights and run to the bed before the lights turns off so it was <laughs> obviously you can't do that but that was like one of my things to do so maybe if you're failing to go to sleep right there so be so fast that you can uh beat the speed of light to <laughs> switch off the light before you hit the bed right there now i can't thank you enough for your time obviously um you got to be rushing to go and sleep just so that you get your beauty sleep and, um, you know, you are well replenished in the morning. Is there somehow that if somebody has watched this video and wants to know more about what you do, how can they get a hold of you there, Sveti? Okay, so what they, what they can do is Google Sveti Williams and things will come. My, just my name, put my name, S-V-E-T-I, Sveti Williams, and you'll see my Facebook my YouTube, my email, my website. So contact, they can contact me uh, on any of those platforms and that's it. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's been fantastic, but do you have any sort of last words for people that can help them alleviate their sleep deprivation or insomnia uh, so that they can, you know, start creating businesses that are actually profitable and enjoyable? Yes, absolutely. So just remember, if you if you are if you are designed to sleep, to spend a third of your life sleeping, you need to take it seriously. 
the work still be there tomorrow. So some people, yes, say that oh, I can survive on four hours sleep. Yes, you can, but for how long, really? You, you basically will exhaust yourself and you have the time of your exhaustion. Then you got to go through this again and you're gonna, you, you don't want to jeopardize your health and obviously your career if just because you didn't get enough sleep. I particularly take sleep very seriously. I get enough um, every night. So I always, always, always tell people get enough sleep, prioritize it, schedule it in your calendar, and get things done during the day so you can have that great night's sleep because when you do have that great night's sleep, you bounce out of bed, you can be more productive. You can be three times more productive the next day. Absolutely. Well, Sveti, I can't thank you enough. And if you are watching this video right now and you've, um, you know, gotten a nugget or two from Sveti, she actually helps people beat their insomnia without any medication or without any damaging side effects. So if you've been suffering from lack of sleep or any sleep deprivation, I will be putting all the information for Sveti uh, so you can get a hold of her um, before you do yourself harm. Because without sleep and without you, um, you know, that sleep and without you, um, you know, being productive, there's no point um, in you staying up and, you know, uh, being an insomniac when there's people like Sveti that can help you out. Now, thank you so much for your time today, Sveti. And hopefully everybody else that's watching here would get a good night's sleep. Thank you for having me. Good night. <laughs> Absolutely. Have a good night. You do understand whatever you're going to say from now on, canon will be used against you in a court of law, right? <laughs> I accept. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right.